Okay, dear colleagues, as a part of the International Conference on Parallel Processing and SRMPDS uh, workshop, let me introduce our paper titled Versus Co-Allocation Optimization Algorithms for Distributed Computing Environments uh, from authors Viktor Toporkov and Dmitry Yemelyanov, your presenter. And uh, we both represent Moscow Power Engineering Institute. So let's begin our discussion. Uh, the paper considers uh, problem of job flow scheduling and resources co-allocation in distributed environments with non-dedicated resources. And uh, it is well known that uh, the such called economic models of scheduling are proved to be efficient uh, in cloud computing, utility grids and uh, multi-agent systems. And uh, when we talk about efficiency, uh, the main aspect of the job flow scheduling is efficiency first in terms of quality of service we provide to the users and second uh, is, it is how efficient uh, the actual resources utilization and uh, on this slide uh, we have a schematic picture of what the job flow scheduling problem is first of all we have a list or a queue of parallel jobs submitted by the system users and uh, here we have a set of resources or so computing nodes uh, on a timeline so the local schedules are exposed and at a, any given time uh, some nodes may have uh, already running tasks on them and uh, another, maybe, another nodes may be reserved somewhere in the future uh, so the actual job flow scheduling problem is to take all these jobs uh, and to allocate the required resources for them and to execute them on our available resources. Uh, the problem uh, and the additional complexity may arise uh, because uh, generally every user may have uh, a preference on how the job should be performed. For example, uh, maybe the start time should be minimized, or the cost, total execution cost optimized, or maybe runtime minimized, data start solution optimized, for and job flow uh, scheduling so problem uh, is uh, so called cyclic scheduling. Uh, because, uh, you know, we can't just take the whole job flow and schedule it uh, now and in the distant future. Uh, we need some reliable, reliable information about the actual uh, nodes uh, utilization. So in the cycle scheduling we have these uh, cycles and uh, scheduling intervals during which uh, we have reliable information about each node local schedule and based on this data we can allocate resources and uh, uh, maybe reserve resources to execute the user jobs. Uh, really each uh, user job uh, may have a complex structure which can be represented uh, with a uh, computational graph and uh, here we have uh, some example of how this uh, graph is really executed uh, on a set of uh, simultaneously available and allocated resources uh, so the question now is uh, how in the first place these resources should be uh, allocated for each job and uh, each job is uh, has a resource request which is really a set of specifications of what uh, resources and in what quantity are required to execute this job uh, so a general resource request contains the following parameters it is number of nodes required the performance parameters uh, the expected computational volume of the job uh, the total cost or budget that the user is uh, allocating to implement this job and uh, maybe some custom uh, criterion uh, the one we talked before for example it's cost minimization start time minimization uh, energy consumption minimization consumption minimization and so on so to execute the job one should allocate a set of resources or a window uh, which uh, is uh, complies with uh, the resource request requ requirements. So, as a simple example, having this set of nodes and their local schedules, let's try to allocate uh, a window of four nodes 
uh, which will minimize the start time. So really, here it is, so these four nodes, and uh, these time intervals during which we allocate the node will call slot. Uh, each slot is described by the node it is allocated on its performance, cost, uh, start and uh, finish times. So here the window represents and consists of four slots. Uh, another limitation or restriction we should talk about is that uh, usually every job flow scheduling problem uh, have uh, time limitations. So uh, it could be some uh, deadline for job execution, it may be some uh, uh, functionality restriction in a backfilling operation, or it could be a scheduling horizon, uh, so the represents the interval during which we have reliable information about the uh, node uh, schedule and the utilization information. So, in order to execute a job, we need to find and allocate a set of slots uh, which are suitable according to the job resource request. And uh, in this slide we present a general window search scheme which do, which do just that. Uh, as a standalone step, uh, it uh, gathers uh, all the information, all the slots uh, in the system uh, from now and uh, to the future and order them by their start time. Then in this loop, uh, we just go through this list from the first one uh, slot to the, to the next one and uh, to the last one. And uh, at each step, at each given time, we uh, just maintain some window list. Window list is really a list of uh, slots which are simultaneously available to execute uh, our job. Uh, but uh, this list usually may, be, may contain more than n slots which is required. So at each step we uh, select n window slot which is best by the user criterion Z and uh, so uh, just maybe as an algorithm of a linear search at the end of the list uh, the best of this interim n slot window will be the best uh, for the whole uh, scheduling interval. So we just return it as a solution. On this slide the window search scheme is visualized and we can see the uh, system slots ordered by their start time. So here is, uh, on the, this axis the start time is increasing. And uh, on the first step uh, the window list is consists of these three slots. Then the next slot is added and window list consists of now four slots which are simultaneously available to execute our job. Uh, the next start time is here. And we can see that these two slots uh, are, have early finish time and they can't uh, support our job execution with this start time. So they are dropped out. And the uh, window list consists of slot 3, 4 and 6. Uh, slot 5 is uh, too short to support it. Uh, so it marked in yellow. And the final step, we add final slot, and uh, the window list consists of four slots now. And uh, as we said earlier, on each step we need to uh, allocate uh, n slots. For example, now uh, if we need uh, only three slots to execute user job, we need to allocate uh, a three slots out of these four slots, which are best according to the user criterion. And for example, we should allocate these three, sl three slots uh, as an interim solution or as a final solution. So now to complete uh, the general window search scheme implementation, uh, we just need to introduce an optimal slot subset allocation procedure. So the problem is that uh, when we have uh, a window list of M slots uh, to execute a user job we need a subset of N slots which are best uh, by the user criterion Z. Uh, generally each uh, uh, slot uh, has a cost, usage cost and, uh, and uh, the value of 
corresponding to the uh, user criterion. It may be uh, processing power, data storage, uh, power consumption, and so on. Uh, so, for this purpose, we can state uh, the following uh, linear problem. Uh, in which uh, we need to maximize uh, this uh, additive criterion Z, which is uh, really uh, the sum of uh, partial values Z i from each slot, uh, with the following uh, restriction. It is a restriction on the total cost uh, which uh, user is allocating to execute the job. It is a restriction uh, to the number of uh, slots we need in our uh, window and uh, each variable x is defines if uh, each uh, slot is allocated to user window or not so it's one or zero really and so this task is uh, really similar to the task of uh, uh, zero one knapsack problem, uh, but with uh, one additional restriction that uh, we need uh, only n slots, not uh, less, not more, but we need n slots, uh, which uh, maximizes uh, this criterion Z and uh, which total costs, to total cost which are less than uh, this C major. So, in order to solve this problem, uh, we introduce the following recurrent uh, dynamic scheme. It is really based on a 0-1 knapsack problem, uh, but uh, introduce and adds a new dimension to it. So, here is an example of uh, resulting uh, dynamic tables. Uh, it is uh, an example when we have uh, a total, when we have only three uh, slots and window slot and we need to allocate uh, a window of two slots uh, from it. So that's why we have uh, two tables here and uh, it's like uh, three dimensional. It's a dimension for cost, dimension for available slots and the dimension for number of slots we need uh, in our window. Uh, so here is an example of uh, calculation and solution uh, for some sample example, sample values. And uh, unfortunately, we have uh, increased uh, complexity of such a task, but uh, it may be uh, not so bad when we uh, consider that the number of slots required for one job is uh, much less compared to all the slots uh, available, at, uh, available at, at given time, and especially compared to the total job execution cost. Uh, but anyway, we still try to minimize the uh, algorithm's complexity and uh, here is some heuristic uh, which tries to uh, reuse uh, the computations we performed on the previous steps. Indeed, uh, for example, if we have window list of uh, this structure on one step and on the next step we added uh, the seventh slot and we uh, have this new window slot without without uh, these two uh, slots which are dropped out we uh, still can reuse dynamic computations which we had for these three slots because they are the same and uh, just add new computations here so uh, we will see on the future slides uh, how this heuristic really works Next, we perform a simulation experiment in our custom uh, distributed uh, computing environment simulator and uh, with the following settings, when we had uh, 100 computer nodes, uh, here we can see only a subset of them, uh, we performed a window allocation procedure for one single job with the following requirements, so for example, which required seven simultaneously available, job, uh, available nodes. And uh, for some generality, we introduced uh, independent random parameter Q for each node. Uh, so during the window allocation, we tried to uh, maximize uh, the sum Q of these uh, seven nodes we acquire. 
and this value q is generally generated uh, on the interval from 0 to 10. So uh, if we have a window of uh, 7 nodes, uh, the sum of q uh, should lie somewhere between 0 and 70. Moreover, for a uh, more general case, uh, we introduced some initial utilization in our, in our example uh, resource environment. For example, this task, they were generated ran randomly, uh, hypergeometrically. And uh, here is an example of uh, slots during which uh, nodes are available to perform uh, a user job. Uh, for the algorithm's com uh, comparison, we consider and implement uh, the following algorithms. First of all, it's a, a first fit algorithm uh, which uh, just considers the heterogeneous distributed environment but returns uh, the just the first suitable and affordable uh, window found. Next is a general uh, window search scheme but uh, which performs optimal allocations not in a general, general case but for only for some uh, predefined uh, but common criteria. It's finish time minimization, runtime minimization, cost minimization, uh, and so on. Uh, next, uh, next are two algorithms which we introduced in this uh, talk. Uh, it is uh, MaxQ, it implements an optimal slot subset allocation, and MaxQ Opt, which introduces uh, the same algorithm but uh, with uh, uh, computations reusing heuristic. And next, to introduce um, multiple best uh, heuristic, which is really uh, calls uh, first feed algorithm multiple times, and amongst, among uh, these multiple alternatives, uh, it returns the best uh, according to the um, uh, to the criterion which we uh, uh, which we consider. And uh, all these algorithms, uh, they were published uh, some time ago. So let's, let's see some uh, simulation results and start on time analysis. Uh, on this graph we can see for each algorithm, first fit, min finish, max Q and so on, we can uh, see start time value in blue, uh, run time in orange and as they are sum, the high edge is the finish time. Uh, so we can see that uh, all algorithms uh, provided best results best uh, based according to uh, their target criteria. For example, first field provided uh, minimal start time, finish provided minimal finish time, run time provided minimal run time, and so on. Algorithms uh, like min cost and max queue, which uh, don't perform time optimization, have start time somewhere in the middle of the scheduling interval uh, because uh, they are available to find uh, their best values only there. And uh, one point here is that uh, with so much nodes, like 100, we have first fit and min finish algorithms uh, worked uh, like an identical algorithm. So on the next slide uh, we perform the same uh, algorithm on uh, environment with only 40 nodes and here we can see that first fit and mid finish uh, have different results they are similar but different and uh, here mid finish really uh, showed uh, the minimal finish time start first fit showed minimal start time min run time minimal run, run time and uh, so on so According to time criteria, uh, our algorithms worked as expected. Uh, similarly, when we consider another parameters, for example execution cost, uh, we can see that uh, the minimum cost was provided indeed uh, by the uh, cost minimization algorithm. It is uh, uh, really have a quite a smaller value provided. And uh, as well, algorithms uh, have uh, quite a big value, which is uh, very close to the limit. Uh, as you remember, maybe the limit was uh, 444. 
Uh, and finally, when we consider the general Q, Q parameter, this parameter is independent from cost, from time, from any other uh, nodes or algorithm, uh, some special uh, features. Uh, we can see that uh, the max Q, the algorithm we proposed in this paper, is indeed provided the maximum value. And uh, uh, as uh, this Q was generated, it was, it was generated uh, in, on the interval randomly, on the interval from 0 to 10 for each node. And as we have 7 nodes, the practical limit for Q for a 7 uh, nodes window is 70. So we can see that uh, max Q is uh, quite close to this limit and all the other algorithms are uh, almost perfectly at the middle of this interval so because they just don't perform any Q, general Q optimization. Multiple best algorithm which uh, just uh, selects best value from some multiple alternatives found so as this uh, alternatives were found randomly, but still the best of them provided quite good value, but it's still uh, worse compared to the max Q, which uh, almost surely provided the optimal value, the optimal solution. Uh, and uh, on this graph and uh, on the previous graph we showed max Q and not max Q opt. Uh, because they are essentially uh, the same algorithms, they provide absolutely the same results and uh, the difference between them only in uh, their implementations and uh, the complexity of their implementations and MaxQ opt uh, have some heuristic to decrease the complexity and uh, talking about uh, the complexity, this graph shows the actual algor algorithms running time uh, depending on the number of uh, nodes uh, in our environment and uh, here we can see uh, here is a logarithmic scale on uh, time in milliseconds and we can see that uh, general case algorithms max q and max q opt have a dramatically uh, larger running time compared to other algorithms especially compared to first feed but uh, maybe not so dramatically uh, larger compared to multiple best. And here we can see that uh, our heuristic uh, to minimize the complexity for max Q opt is really works and uh, uh, on this slide uh, we can see that we have uh, like threefold advantage for max Q opt compared to max Q. Uh, besides in this table we can see uh, how Q value is uh, uh, rises uh, for different number of nodes uh, in the environment. Uh, this graph shows uh, the same algorithms and uh, their running time, but this time uh, according to the uh, length of the scheduling interval. And here we have a similar picture with the uh, general case algorithms max Q and max Q opt having the maximum running time, but uh, with max Q opt, heuristic complexity having as three times advantage over the initial, uh, initial max Q algorithm. And as a brief conclusion, uh, in this paper we proposed a general square window search algorithm which incorporates some uh, special procedures and heuristic including a special slo op op optimal slot subset allocation procedure. Uh, this uh, algorithm uh, by the simulation study proved uh, advantage of a first fit algorithm and uh, multiple best uh, optimization heuristic uh, especially on a general case criterion but as a drawback it requires much more time to run this algorithm it has a high high uh, execution complexity and uh, especially compared to the first fit algorithm and so in our further work we will be focused to 
to minimize the complexity of these algorithms and as well as to use them in some practical tasks. So many thanks to our supporters, supporters of this research and uh, thank you, thank you for your attention.